Hello, guys and gals, me, Mudahar, and, uh, you know, there's an insane update to that PAL World Nintendo lawsuit. Now, I told you after I looked at this thing, like, four months ago, I was gonna be keeping an eye on it. And today, there's been some pretty massive updates, and it's to a point where we now know exactly why Nintendo is taking down the old PAL World train. Now, to give an idea, PAL World is an independent game that was released about a year ago. Uh, by Pocket Pair, and it's effectively a game that is just literally Pokemon with guns, okay? And to give you an idea of how much of a, you know, comparison it is, Nintendo may use the statement I just gave in an actual legal case. Because quite literally, if you play Pal World, it is just the Pokemon IP with guns attached to it. Now, it's not to say it's a bad thing. Plenty of people enjoyed it, me included. Plenty of other gamers out there. Plenty of other content creators. It is, in fact, a game that now has come out on PlayStation, Xbox, and people are just actually enjoying it. Now, with all of the people enjoying PAL World, it's no doubt in my mind that obviously it is pretty close to Pokemon, okay? I mean, you've got some similar looking mons, you've got the entire content of us throwing uh, PAL balls at Pokemon and capturing them with, you know, shakes, three shakes, a guaranteed capture, and, uh, and whatnot. So obviously, uh, you know, Pokemon has been making games with kind of similar, you know, mechanics, uh, like the Arceus Legend game, and even like the new Pokemon Violet Scarlet with like its more open world design, uh, even though the open world looks like it's straight out of 2000 and fucking two, but hey, that's a whole different story. Now here Pocket Bear comes out and it's like, boys, in September 19th, Pokemon Company and Nintendo files a patent infringement lawsuit. Now, a patent infringement lawsuit is basically some type of gameplay or technology that has been discovered by any company that has effectively been patented, so only they, for a certain period of time, can use that technology in their video games. So, details of the lawsuit. The plaintiff claims that PAL World, released to us on January 19, 2024, infringes... Well, actually, it wasn't even a year ago. I actually thought it was a year ago. Time does fly. Infringes upon the following three patents held by the plaintiffs and they're seeking an injunction against the game and compensation for a portion of the damages incurred between the date of registration of the patents and the date of filing of this lawsuit. So, if you look at the actual patents over here real quick, they've got three different patents, uh, number 7545191, 7493117, and 7528390. Now, I've pulled up each one of these patents, but they also provided the application dates and, of course, the registration dates. So if you look carefully at these dates, they're past, you know, the actual game's release. So you might be like, whoa, how the fuck can you patent something after the game that you're suing has been released, okay? How can you, how can you patent something after it and then sue them for damages before the filing of that patent? Well, to give an idea, I pulled up each and every single one of those patents real quickly. So right over here, you can basically Google this up in like on Google Patents, and they'll tell you every single one of these available. Now, if you look very carefully, they've actually been patents that have been applied as of 2021. So each three of these patents has an actual application in 2021, where the legal status is active for all of them. So these are more patent updates, I, I, I believe, rather than like fresh new patents. If these were fresh from like, you know, the actual patent like oven, then obviously we would probably look at this and say Nintendo's just overextending. But clearly they had these in place. So I wanted to look at some of these actual patents real quick and look at exactly what Nintendo is going for. So for instance, in patent JP754-5191B1, it's going for a game program, game system, game device, or a game processing method, okay? So the abstract, the problem is to provide a game program, game system, game device, and game processing method that can cause a player character to perform various types of actions on a field in a virtual space. In a first mode, the aiming direction of the virtual space is determined based on the second operation input, and the player character is caused to fire an item that affects a field character arranged on the field in the virtual space in the aiming direction based on a third operation input. So it sounds kind of confusing in a way, so they provided some visual explanations for this entire scenario, right? And obviously, if you look at these patents, it's kind of what people speculated back in September, right? They were probably going for the whole Pokeball situation, which is where your character gets ready in the wild, throws the actual Pokeball at the field character, which is a Pokemon in the wild, captures said Pokemon with that actual Pokeball, all right? They, they even get like a little uh, visual response that says, good job, pal, you did it! Or the Pokemon escapes and you're basically fucked.
So obviously, the further you go down this patent too, we're looking at even battles that are happening in the wild and Pokemon that appear to also be on your side. And of course, the further, further we go down into this scenario, you can start to look at other actual situations. So then you look at the other patents in this case, right? Which again, simulating properties, behavior or motions of objects in the game world. For example, computing tire load in a car race game using determination of contact between the game characters or objects to avoid collision between virtual racing cars. And for the next one over here, obviously we've got computing the motion of game characters with respect to other game characters, game objects, or elements of a game scene for simulating the behavior of a group of virtual soldiers or for pathfinding, basically, I guess, bots that appear to follow you in the field, your player character. So you can have a Pokemon effectively trail you. Now, the way that I have seen these kind of provided is like, if you want to even apply these to like actual gameplay terms and not legal patent terms, basically it appears that you're talking about throwing a Pokeball into the wild to capture another Pokemon or field character. That's one of the actual patents. The other one is throwing a character outside into the wild so they can then participate in the fight and of course, last but not least, apparently even mounting a character for a specific zone. So if you wanted to fly on the back of a Pokemon, you can do that in the wild. Now, I think patents in video games are a little absurd. Okay, the first two, you know, throwing a Pokeball and using it in the wild, I'm sure Pokemon probably has some claim to that, or maybe they can talk really heavily. But mounting a character and like using it for transportation, I mean, dog. This is something that World of Warcraft provides its gamers like every single day. They've been doing it long before Pokemon even had the idea in 3D space. So at this moment in time, I, you know, to me, it seems like a lawsuit that's targeting a smaller company. And I'm sure that if they really had a problem with this, they might even consider taking Activision Blizzard or Microsoft until you realize that Microsoft is worth like 10 over 10 times what Nintendo is, and even Activision Blizzard is no small company to go up against when it comes to lawsuits. So again, it really feels like we're targeting the small fries here. So again, when it came to the summary of the claim, what they seek for is a payment of 5 million yen plus to the Pokemon company and also to the Nintendo company. Now that's around $45,000 like Canadian, so again, multiply that by two, you're looking at like maybe I want to say 60,000 American, 65,000 around that point. And you might be like, that's really not a whole lot of money. Surely Pal World has made more than that. They clearly have. And the thing is, it's not even the money that's the important part. It's this, an injunction against Pal World. Now, because these are two Japanese corporations that are going against each other, an injunction could mean a lot of things. They could literally go up to Pal World and say, hey, listen, that whole like throwing the Pokeball mechanic, we want it gone. And that would be kind of devastating because it's an incredibly important part of the Pal World game. Like imagine if, you know, Konami, when they were releasing Metal Gear, decided to, uh, I guess, patent the idea of field of vision cones. Like imagine the Soliton radar system with like all of the actual points, like the actual, you know, cone of visions on people. Imagine if they patented that and, you know, you had other game developers jump in, like stealth action game developers, you know, people like Splinter Cell, they're like, we want to put in a map with cones of visions. And they decided, no, we want all of this gone. Imagine if you were actually targeting situations similar to it. I mean, it would be absurd, but when you kind of really think about it, it's pretty comparable to what Nintendo has done in this scenario. Now, obviously, uh, Pal World, they're going to fight this through legal proceedings. And I think the actual first case is going to be like next week, which is going to be insane to witness. Obviously, I want to converse with Japanese lawyers uh, that probably know more about the situation uh, as it happens. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm talking about like the translation issues uh, just because this is a Japanese case and having it translated uh, basically in real time is a pretty daunting task. Now, again, anything legal that I've said in this video, I don't want it to constitute as actual advice or understanding. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a cybersecurity guy. Uh, clearly, this is incredibly complex Japanese patent law. And whether Nintendo wins or not, it's entirely up in the air. Obviously, Nintendo is one of the biggest companies in Japan. And I'm sure that comes with a bit of legal favoritism in its regard. But look, this is a situation that from what Nintendo is showing is just, it appears literally to be bullying. Now, obviously, Nintendo, in my opinion, I think they're bullying these guys, but clearly Pal World Pocket Pair knew they flew way too close to the sun on this one, okay? Like, it's one thing to make a ripoff of, like, a Legend of Zelda-type game. It's another thing to go after the throat of Pokemon, 
one of the biggest media franchises in gaming, if not the world. So yeah, this is not something that I expected. Um, it's not something that I didn't expect to see. It's glad that we've got some light shed on what the actual patents were. And now that we know, it just shows Nintendo as one of the pettiest fucking companies in this regard. And look, if they're hitting so specifically, it explains why Nintendo hasn't even touched, you know, other publishers or other games like Temtem in this case, even though they also kind of ape that Pokemon dynamic. It's because they literally felt that at least in two of the patents, it's pretty damn close. But if we're talking about mounting animals, why are we not mad at World of Warcraft? Hell, to be honest, why are we not mad at World of Warcraft for even the Battle Pets mechanic, which was introduced well after Pokemon was already patenting it, from my understanding. You know, is it that they don't want to take on Microsoft's legal team because they know that's absolutely a lengthy battle that Nintendo probably doesn't want to add to their actual expense sheet? Or is it going after Pocket Pair to make an example out of a smaller developer trying to, you know, work with these ideas? And, you know, even to, like, Pocket Pair, they're not people that will sit down and tell you, we made this game, uh, you know, completely independent of, like, Pokemon's inspiration. I mean, these people literally produced a game they thought would be an amazing, you know, combination. You know, Pokemon with guns, clearly it was. It sold a lot. And so I guess Nintendo missed out on the gravy train, and boom, now they want to actually punish the people that are providing the, 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 the fans, the ex-fans of Pokemon, I guess, or people that want you know, the, the Pokemon company to actually produce good games, you know, they're going after people that are providing the gamers with what they want, which I think is just absurd. Honestly, reading all of this and realizing patents in general for video gaming, you know, it just comes across as some of the most destructive shit. It's literally preventing actual progress in gaming from kind of happening, in my opinion, in some cases at least. You know, when you talk about, like, evil corpo shit, this is literally what it is. And I think, to be honest, like, another reason why I feel Nintendo really went after them is kind of because of, you know, Pocket Pair's insistence on working with Sony and other direct competing, you know, uh, you know uh, console manufacturer in the region. I'm not even including Microsoft in this because, really, Nintendo is going up against Sony. And I think, honestly, it feels like kind of a slight. It's like Sony has literally taken this mature version of Pokemon and have turned it kind of into their household name, at least from the, you know, association business-wise. So I feel like there's a lot of stuff at play here. And to be honest with you, it's just kind of gross to see corporations kind of doing this in the way that they do it. You know, I always think that when it comes to competition, producing the better quality, the most, you know, the, the prized game that people actually want to go for should be the standard. And yes, Pal World flew way too close to the sun. But I honest to God don't believe that the market that is playing Pokemon with guns, you know, <laughs> it really is a missed opportunity by Nintendo. It really just feels like salty stuff. But anyways... Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.